prayer this morning. We're here to lift him up. Let's sing this together now. The created from the You came and you lived among us. You took on our pain. You walked in our pain. And now you're taking us higher. You stepped into time. You laid down your life to save us. You took
Thank you, Jesus, forever changed. Are you thankful that you know that to be true this morning? I was reading the scripture that that song comes from. And it says that we are taken from glory to glory to glory because of the glory of the Spirit of God that's at work in our lives. You've got a God that's on your side and is fighting for you. You know, this week we were at General Conference in Kansas City. And I was struck again and again by how many testimonies came out of this week? How many times during, during preaching or, or even during a business meeting, someone would get up and say, you're not going to believe what happened where we were. You're not going to believe what happened at our church. Uh, healing after healing, transformation after transformation. We serve a glory to glory God. We, we serve a win after win after win God. That's the season that we're in right now and in the middle of chaos around the world. I believe that God is still fighting. God is still working. We're going to see great things even in this house today because we serve a God that takes us from glory to glory to glory. Why don't you turn around, find somebody beside you, shake their hand, give them a big smile, let them know that you are glad to see them here at First Church on a Sunday morning. Thank you for joining us today. If you're a guest with us, we invite you to pick up a connection card. There's a tab on the side that tears off. You can share as much information as you're comfortable sharing. We're not gonna stalk you. We're not gonna come looking for you. We just wanna keep you informed of what's going on around here so that you can be a part of this great First Church family. Tell you what, why don't you, why don't you return to your seats and let me make just a couple of quick announcements. I got something very special I wanna share with you today. First of all, if you did pick up your connection card, you can be seated. If you did pick up your connection card, inside it, there is a card that rather than me going through a whole bunch of announcements that you aren't going to listen to anyway. You can just pull out that card and you can see what all's going on this week and make sure you stay informed of that. Now, I, I do want to point out a couple of things. First of all, that today is the first Sunday of the month. And on the first Sunday of every month, we do our pastor's lunch. If you are a guest with us today, if you are new to First Church, or maybe you've been here for a while and you've, you've never been through uh, the growth track process, and you, you've been here and you think, you know what, I, I wanna figure out how I can get involved, how I can get plugged in, how I can get joined up with some people who are, who are doing the work of God. This is your own ramp to that. Now today, and you'll hear more about this in a minute, Starting this month, we are, we are changing the name of Growth Track to First Steps. So when you hear us talk about First Steps going forward, you'll know that we're talking about the old Growth Track program. But we're, we're constantly reinventing, constantly trying to figure out, is there a better way to communicate what we're doing? And so this is just one of the changes that we've made. This Wednesday night is our first Wednesday service. Now I know Wednesday nights can be tricky for some people to get here. I know you work late. I know you feel like, you know what, I'm not even dressed for church. I, I can't get home, get changed, get there in time. We don't care how you come. We just want you to get here. If you can't make it one other Wednesday night of the month, the first Wednesday of the month, we join together in a time of worship. We hear the word of God and we just celebrate being the family of God and the first church family together. So I invite you to be here this Wednesday night for our first Wednesday service. I want to invite some very special people to join me on the platform. First of all, my wife in the department of very special people. And then I want to invite Dave and Brandy Brown and Autumn and Elijah Mayo to come up here and join me. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Give them a hand as they're coming. You know, after Hurricane Ike, we were out of this building for about two years. And when we came back, um, we decided we had a great opportunity to reestablish some systems at our church. And so three years ago, four years ago, um, uh, Pastor Gurley and Pastor Tyler went to a conference and they came back all excited and wanted to implement systems. And 
And so my husband has been for four years implementing systems. That's kind of what he's, his, his thing has been. And so one of, the, one of the systems we wanted to implement was a way for people to get involved here at First Church. Because we're happy you're here, but we want you serving in your calling also. And so we, we, we started a program called Growth Track and we needed somebody to run Growth Track. And we did it for a few months, just, just the pastoral staff. And we, f- we felt like, okay, this is, this is going somewhere, so we need to establish a leader. And we established Dave and Brandy Brown, who have done phenomenal. They, for three years, have made sure that there are lunches provided. They have made sure that the printouts are over there. They have taught the sessions. They have made sure your children have somewhere to go. Um, With our pastor's meal team, they cook on pastor's meal Sunday, but the other three weeks, they have ensured that there's food back there. And they walk you through the process of getting involved here at First Church. And in the last three years, we have seen so many of you get involved, get plugged in. So let's hear it for you. We not only want you to come and attend services, but we want you to serve because the happiest people are giving people. And we have seen that. We have seen that in you. And Dave and Brandy have done a phenomenal job the last three years. Let's let's hear it for them. But also one thing we have implemented at the church is next steps that nobody should be stagnant. You should always be taking a next step. So that means if, if you are currently working as a greeter and you feel, you feel more, more like you need to take on more roles, there's another, there's another place for you to go. There's another ministry for you to be involved in. You can start getting involved in kids ministry or you can start working our nursery and you can start growing in, in your calling. And we believe that every, every step Every person in this building should be taking steps forward because if you're not taking step forward, you're taking step backwards and you're never just standing still. And so we always want to do next steps and Dave and Brandy have found their next step. And in doing so, I'm going to let Pastor Tyler tell you what their new responsibilities will be. So here's the deal. I know that that many of you around this room this morning have been through growth track. If you have been through growth track in the last four years, will you raise your hands all across this building? Wow. Look at that. Yeah, that's, that's worth Yay. another hand. Give yourself another hand. <laughs> what we've realized though on the, on the end of growth track is that we, we've got the process in place to get you involved and get you plugged in. But what we realized is that some people would come to a point, they would get involved, they would become a member of the church, and then they felt like they had arrived when they step into that ministry. Well, we wanted to add another layer of of leadership and and take on truly another layer of responsibility to make sure that, as as Tanil just said, that everyone is continually moving forward and continually growing. So... Dave and Brandy, who have done such an incredible job as uh, Growth Track coordinators, as we transition Growth Track to first steps today, we have also created the role of next steps pastor. And Dave and Brandy are going, uh, y'all come up here so they can see you real good. They're going to step into the role of next steps pastor. What this means, give them a hand. What this means is that we wanna make sure that at First Church, that every person is growing in their relationship with God, in their relationship with others, and in their giftings and in their talents, putting them to work for the cause and kingdom of God. And so they have accepted this knowing that this is, it's, it's a difficult task, but we just wanna make sure that everyone in this building is fulfilled in their relationship and in their calling with God. And so we are, we are moving them from growth track to a team that will oversee a lot of things. They will connect with our dream team leaders, 
They will make sure that everybody in this church that wants to be involved is plugged in, is involved, is growing, and is finding out their next step. So we're, we're excited to introduce them to you as that today. Now, what that does is it creates a vacancy in growth track, which is now first steps. So we thought, what do we need to do? Who do we need to find? Who would be perfect to lead that? So a few years ago, God sent truly Autumn and Elijah Mayo to our church. And there are some people in life that just, there's just an instant connection with. And I remember Autumn and Elijah, their first service was one of our small group fairs. And it's like, well, that's not overwhelming at all. <laughs> Welcome to First Church, go out and eat at a food truck and sign up for some small groups. And that was two years ago. It's hard to believe. And so in the two years, I've watched them completely become First Church DNA. And they are servants at heart. They are willing to do anything and everything that is thrown at them. I've watched them flourish in everything that they're involved in. And over the last probably year, they have been helping out with Growth Track and being over there and, and teaching the sessions. And we thought, who more perfect to take this role than Autumn and Elijah Mayo? So ladies and gentlemen, your new First Steps coordinator is Autumn and Elijah Mayo. Tell you what, y'all come up here, step to the edge of the platform. We're gonna, we're gonna pray and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna invite you all to stand with me if you will. And we're going to take a minute to just pray right now that God would guide us through this process. We're not doing this because we needed something else to do. We are doing this because we feel a responsibility to make sure that this church is a place where no one is left behind, where no one is left out, where no one sits with, with, with nothing to do wondering how they can get involved. We want everyone that wants to be involved to be involved. And with the help of these two incredible couples and the systems and processes that they are leading, we believe that that is going to be the church that this is. Do you believe that? Yes. Worship team, come help me. Come gather around. Let's pray together right now. Just extend a hand, if you will. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the incredible team that you have assembled at this church. God, we thank you for, for the unbelievable gifts and talents and anointings and callings that you have poured out on the people inside of this building. Lord, we ask that you would guide our every footstep, God, that you would, you would lead us and direct us, that we could make decisions that are pleasing to you, God, that we could help people to find their purpose and, and to get involved and to take their next steps. God, this is, this is more than a program. This is more than a plan. This is us trying to hear the voice of heaven, trying to follow after your voice and your calling. It's not your will that anyone would be left to the side, that anyone would be left out, but that, God, every person under the same of my voice and those who are yet to step into this place yet could somehow find their purpose, could discover their calling, could discover that you have a plan for their lives that was in place before they were even born and that God you choose to use us, you choose to work through us. We ask for your anointing and your purpose and your plan and your calling to be made plain in this place and your people as we give you praise and we give you glory and we thank you for what you are doing at First Church. We thank you, God, that we can be part of what you are doing in our city and in our world and in our communities. We give you praise. Come on, lift your voice and give the Lord some praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you all. Thank you all. If the ushers would come, we want to give you an opportunity to give right now. We're going to move back into a time of worship, and we're going to... Pray one more time for some needs that, that I know are represented in this room. If, if you have a need in your body, in your family, in your home, on your job, in your finances, if you have a need this morning, if you walked into this room with a need, will you just slip up a hand all across this house? By the multitude of hands that are raised, you have to know that first of all, you are not alone. And second, that you were in the right place at the right time. 
with the right God and the right group of people. And God is going to do something amazing in this place this morning. In just a few minutes, Josh Herring is going to come and, and preach to you. We're so glad to have Josh and Janae with us today. But I'm telling you by faith, by faith in what I know about my God, God is going to do something of eternal significance in this place this morning. And if you walked in here with a need, I hope you don't expect to go home with that same need because you're in the right place at the right time. Can you just lift your hands, lift your voices, let's pray right now, Lord Jesus. God, we invite you to have your way in the remainder of this service. God, we invite your will to be done, your purpose and your plan to come to pass right now as we lift you up and as we worship you. God, I pray that you would bless every person who has something to give in this offering. I pray that you would bless those who have nothing to give. But God, let your will and your purpose be accomplished in this place as we give you all the praise. Come on, give him some praise right now. God bless you as you give. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's a breaking in my favor. There's a shifting. 
for you have never failed me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence.
the Lord, everybody. Good to be with you in the house of the Lord this morning, expecting God to do great things today. Several people will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost today in this place. That was about 10 of you, but several people will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in this place. In fact, we ought to make it loud right now so hell can hear us. Someone lift up your voice and magnify the name that's above every name. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Harvey is dead and you're still here. Praise God. Bishop Gurley told me to give Harvey its eulogy this morning and christen Azusa Street to come to this place in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm excited about what God is doing. The last time we were here on a, in a prayer conference, God filled 70-something people with the gift of the Holy Ghost, and people will receive it today again. And I have direction, I believe, for tonight to go after some demonic attacks. If you've got any demonic attacks in your home or your family or your mind, please be here tonight because there will be mass deliverance tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. I give honor to Bishop Gurley and his staff and this wonderful church. Thank you for having my beautiful wife and I. We we appreciate the invitation. We are here in the divine will of God. We are coming back in January for a great revival where several people will receive the Holy Ghost and be baptized in Jesus' name. I'm excited about the future of Houston, Texas. I believe great things are happening in this city. Amen. The book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, verse 16 through 18, verse 37 through 39. Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4, 16 through 18, 37 through 39. I hope you realize how blessed you are to have the talent and anointing that's on this platform. What incredible voices and gifted singers and musicians that you have. In the words of Lee Stone King, if I could sing like Tyler Whaley and Jonathan Dean, I'd be a star. Unbelievable. Some people just have it all. No jealousy though, just glad that they're here, amen. Acts two verse one. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, everyone say suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled. Somebody say they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Verse 16, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Verse 37, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. I want to preach to you from the subject this morning, the greatest miracle of all. The greatest miracle of all. Turn to your neighbor and say, you need the Holy Ghost. 
and turn to your other neighbor and tell them, and you really need the Holy Ghost. Are you ready? Would you join hands with the person beside you? And I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would loose the gift of faith right now in this atmosphere. I pray a divine shift is taking place in this service on the first day of October as we step out of a storm and step into revival in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let there be a supernatural shift right now from worry and anxiety and fear and being on the defense and recovery in and apostolic demonstration and power and expectation. Let revival take off from this service. Launch your spirit into this house, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Would you clap your hands and let the devil hear you as you magnify the King of Kings. Hallelujah, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Praise God, you may be seated. 37 recorded miracles in the ministry of Jesus Christ between Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John before he was executed on the cross. 37 recorded miracles that we know of. And several of them were miracles so massive that the entire crowd of thousands of people would be healed or delivered from whatever attack their body was under. In fact, he did so many miracles that John wrote, if we wrote down all the miracles that he did, all of the books in the world could not contain the miracles that Jesus Christ performed. When you clap your hands to him, he's not some invisible weakling that might or might not exist. He is out here right now. He's in the atmosphere right now. He's above everything attacking your house right now. Attacking your kids right now. Attacking your mind right now. He's not some being that may be there. He is there and he can do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or even think. What could have been greater? What could have been greater than being there with him as he opened blind Bartimaeus' eyes? What could have been greater than being there in the crowd when 5,000 people were fed with a couple of fish and a few loaves of bread? What could have been greater than being there watching in a graveyard as Lazarus, after four days of death, walked out of a tomb completely resurrected by the power of the spoken word of Jesus Christ? What could have been greater than being there in J. Iris's house as he walked in and raised the girl from the dead. What could have been greater than being with him when he touched, when the woman touched the hem of his garment and a 12 year disease died instantly because there was power in his clothes. What could have been greater than being there with him as he walked on the water in a storm that should have drowned the disciples, but it bowed at the feet of the King of Kings and the Lord. Lords, what could have been greater than being with him in every miracle that he performed? What could be greater than walking with him and hearing his voice praying in the garden early in the morning? What, what Can you imagine waking up every morning for three and a half years listening to Jesus pray, being in the presence of the Lord, being there with him. I'm sure they thought nothing could be greater than being with him. But there is something much greater than being with him. In fact, he said it like this. I have been with you, but I shall be in you. The only thing greater than being with him is him being in you. Knowing he's out there is wonderful. Knowing he's in here is wonderful. But knowing he's in here is far greater than everything. (laughs) 
The greatest miracle is when you have the Spirit of God living inside of you. I have been blessed to see many miracles. I have been privileged by God to be in the room when the dead were raised, when people uh, came out of comas. I've been privileged to be there when, when blind eyes were open. I've been privileged several times to be there when deaf ears were open. I've been privileged by God to see people get out of wheelchairs that never should have walked. I, I remember a time when, when I pulled a man out of a wheelchair praying and he had no muscles on his calves at all 70 years old but as we prayed for him and I remember like it was yesterday feeling those legs with just bone covered by skin but as we prayed in the name of Jesus like they sang about muscles began to form and push my hands back as I began to pray you have come too late if you want to convince this preacher that God is not a God that does the miraculous I've seen him do too many things I've seen him move the mountain. You can't convince me that he cannot heal you of cancer right now. You cannot convince me he cannot deliver your child. You cannot convince me he cannot save your family. I've seen him cause tumors to disappear. I have seen him do miracles that were just unfathomable, diseases that were destroying someone's body, absolutely removed instantly by saying his name. But the greatest miracle I've ever seen is when he filled me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. April 5th, 1990, at seven years old in Kenai, Alaska, when God filled me with the Holy Ghost was still the greatest miracle today I've ever experienced because no matter how great the miracles of God you've seen him do, no matter how great services you've been in where you've seen the power of God, nothing can compare to the moment when he fills you with his spirit. You can be healed of cancer and go straight to hell. I'm going to preach over here for a minute. You can be healed of any disease in your body and go straight to hell, no matter how great the powerful experience was. That's why the Holy Ghost is greater than a healing. A healing is powerful, but it's not salvation. It takes care of you temporarily, but salvation is something that lasts eternally. And when you go to heaven, you'd rather have salvation you might be sick right now, but if you're on your way to heaven, salvation was greater than the thing you want God to do in your body. You might be broke right now, but salvation is greater than all the riches in the world. It's greater than healing. It's greater than open doors. It's greater than blessings. Everything in the world that you cannot compare anything to receiving the Holy Ghost. I say this every time I preach it, but try any drug you want to try. It will not take you as high as the most high God will take you when he fills you. There's about 18 witnesses on that, but it's the truth on there. And uh, In fact, there's some ex-drug addicts in here that will tell you that there's no drug in the world that can compare to receiving the Holy Ghost. Drink any alcoholic beverage you want to drink. It will not quench your thirst. There's no hangovers, though, when you receive the Holy Ghost. Jesus said it like this. He that drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But he that drinketh of the water I shall give him shall never thirst again. Why? Because when you receive the Holy Ghost, it quenches the desire for everything the world is trying to satisfy you. Try any relationship you want to try. There's no one in this world that can complete you and fulfill you and make you whole like the power of the Holy Ghost will do when it comes inside of you. Well, how do I receive it? Glad you asked. Before I tell you how to receive it, let me just show you that you need it. John chapter 3 and verse number 5. John 3, verse number 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Romans chapter 8. 
and verse number nine, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. In other words, you can go to church and not make it to heaven. You can know the Bible and not go to heaven. You can preach on TV and not go to heaven. You can have everyone follow you and believe in all your quotes and still not go to heaven. But you need the power of the Spirit. You need to be born of the water and the Spirit. If the Spirit is not in you, you're none of His. You can approve of God all you want to. That does not mean He approves of you. You can confess that he's real. That doesn't matter. When you receive his spirit, that is God saying, I put my approval on you. I want to live in you. Well, how do I receive the Holy Ghost? Uh, Let's put up Acts chapter 2, verse 4. We read that first. Let's read that again. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. Acts chapter 10, verse 45 and 46. If I was the devil, I would just leave right now. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. How do they know? Verse 46, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Acts chapter 19, verse number 5 and verse number 6 says this. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of of the Lord Jesus. And verse 6 said, when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. In your Bible, when people receive the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, when you receive that, the evidence that you've been filled with the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost is you will speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. That means if you speak English, it will come out of your mouth not in English you will not understand what you're saying but you will know beyond the shadow of a doubt I've never felt what I feel right now because God is speaking through you I don't know why God chose the tongue as the evidence that you've been filled he could have said your your right hand will shake And when your left hand starts to shake, you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. I remember as a little kid, this guy was in the altar, and uh, my mom at the church said, he got the Holy Ghost, Josh. And I said, no, he did not. I don't think my voice sounded the same then as it does now. But I said, no, he did not. Why? His hands didn't shake. She said, your hands don't have to shake to receive the Holy Ghost. He could have said, you'll, you'll fall on your back and you'll receive, that's the evidence. But that's not what he said. He chose the tongue. Why did God choose the tongue as the proof? Well, the Bible says your tongue is a world of iniquity, full of deadly poison. And it also says the tongue, no man can con- it. He can't tame it. You can't even control your tongue, no matter how spiritual you are. I know that stepped on someone's toes. Sorry, I'll back up, but you're still not an angel. We are in peril and not heaven. I'll, I'll, I'll br- okay. Have you ever been the altar worshiping God? Oh, I give all of myself to you breaking, crying, feel totally, completely different, and you leave, and two minutes out of the parking lot, someone cuts you off. Don't act holy on me. And that same tongue that was, I give you all of me, says, God, kill them now. I was driving to preach a Holy Ghost. This is, I'll I'll just be real because that's who I am. I was preaching a Holy Ghost rally one time in Tampa, going with the the interstate, flying 75 with everybody. Everyone's cruising along. And out of nowhere, this lady drives by and waves part of her hand at me. 
particular part. And I was like, Jesus' name, Jesus' name. And then for no reason, someone else did. And I was like, kill him, God, right now. Just kill him. Still don't have the Elijah anointing. I'm working on it, though. Well, that same tongue can fail you. I gar- oh, I guarantee, no matter how spiritual you are, if someone pushes the right buttons on the right topic and the right time, even the greatest, most humble, meekest saint in here could snap and say something. Most of you don't agree, but I'm right. Because the word said no man can tame the tongue. So it makes sense that when God fills you with his spirit, he takes the one thing that you cannot control and says, let me show you what I can do through you. There's a new sheriff in town. There's a new king living inside of you. You know this is not you. You can't make up these words, but you know I'm speaking through you. Well, well, I don't believe you have to speak in tongues to receive the Holy Ghost. Well, you're not going to like me, but you're wrong. Because if you think you can have the Spirit of God in you and it, and you don't have to speak in tongues, what you're saying is, ready? I can receive the Holy Ghost and keep it locked down on the inside. In other words, your human spirit's bigger than God's spirit. In other words, when God, the great King of kings, heaven is his throne, earth is his footstool, throws, pours out his spirit on you, you're saying, I can keep it down. I can control it. You don't have the Holy Ghost then. Because when you receive the Holy Ghost, it fills you up. In other words, he pours it into you and it fills you up to the brim and it comes out of your mouth. Jesus said like this, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Spirit. Pastor Whaley, come here. Can you help me, sir? Here, come here. Hold this cup for me. I'm like, this cup, let's give you a visual. This cup is me. The bottle is God. The water is the spirit. God's gonna fill me up. Okay. Okay. I'm just about full. Let me pour a little more spirit in me. This takes mad skill. Now, I'm full pretty much, aren't I? You're holding me. I'm pretty full, huh? But if you were walking in this room, you could know if that cup was full or empty. Because the Spirit's still on the inside. But if I keep pouring, guess what? The Spirit comes out of the mouth of the cup. Everyone can tell in this room that can see that that cup is full now. Why? Because when God pours out the Holy Ghost, he pours it on you. And Oh, you can sit there and patty cake me, but you also can realize when you get it, you cannot keep it down. It has to come out of your mouth because his spirit is greater than your spirit. Somebody clap your hands if you've got the Holy Ghost. Magnify God because it's real and it's alive. Take it out the check. Brand new carpet. Maybe I won't be back in January. (laughs) Sorry, Bishop. I know you're watching somewhere. When God fills you with the Holy Ghost, it's like from the feet to the top of your head. And it comes out. It might be one word. It might be two words. It might be two hours. But when God fills you with the Spirit, It comes out of your mouth, and someone is going to get the Holy Ghost today in this place and receive God's Spirit. It's going to come out of their mouth. It's happening everywhere. In the last three weeks, over 5,000 people have received the Holy Ghost in the nation of Africa. (laughs) 
That's because the Bible says, in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. It's raining everywhere across the world right now. No matter the environment. I preached the Holy Ghost deal a couple of years ago in Florida. And we had 201 men receive the Holy Ghost. And in that service, at the end of the men's conference, I was going to tell a story about a man getting the Holy Ghost. Well, at the end of the message, God switched it on me and said, tell a story about a young lady getting the Holy Ghost in a prison cell in California a couple years ago. And so I told this story about this girl in a prison cell who was listening to us preach on the Holy Ghost, raised her hands in the cell with her cellmate, and both of them received the Holy Ghost in their cell. I told that story at the men's conference a year or two ago, a couple of weeks ago, a man walks up to me and said, I'm, a, I'm over a prison ministry in Tampa. I took that CD and took it to the prison service last year in Tampa. There were 17 inmates in the service. They were watching you preach on the Holy Ghost. At the end, you told that story. You had everyone come up to the front and repent. And then you prayed the prayer of faith and told them to raise their hands. He said, the inmates just followed the DVD and the CD and they raised their hands and all 17 of them were filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He said, but it gets better. I went back a couple months ago. There were 18 new prisoners in there. I played the same message. They came to the front. They raised their hands. And all 18 of them received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. It's going to happen in this room today. It's going to happen no matter how long you've prayed for it or how short. If this is your first service, get ready to get the Holy Ghost. If you've been praying for it 30 years, get ready to get the Holy Ghost. It's going to happen. How do I get it? Well, I cannot give it to you, but I can tell you how you will get it. Number one, you have to repent of your sins. Repentance is stopping, turning, and walking the other way from sin. So you cannot get the Holy Ghost and expect God to be a roommate with this other life you've got going on. Now, you might fall and mess up. Everyone does. But if you want God to give you the Holy Ghost, you have to want all of you to surrender to God. In other words, you can't just say, God, I surrender this moment, but I really am not interested in living for you with my life. Besides, I don't know why you would want to say that because that's not going to get you into heaven. Can you imagine standing before God on judgment day and saying, I didn't want the Holy Ghost living in me, but can I have my mansion now? It probably will not go well. So you have to repent. Number two, you have to desire the Holy Ghost. If you do not want it, you will not receive it. If you don't want the Holy Ghost and everybody on your pew wants the Holy Ghost beside you, God will fill every single person, jump over you, go to the next person beside you. That's how God is. He will fill the people that desire the Holy Ghost. Whether you're on the back row on the balcony right now and you want it, or you're in the front row and you want it. Today, if you want the Holy Ghost and you need the Holy Ghost, God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Number three, you have to focus your mind on the Lord. So when we pray in a few moments for the Holy Ghost, you're not worried about who's praying with you, what the preacher's doing, what song they sing or don't sing. Your, your mind is on Jesus. And I'll, I'll just say it bluntly, your mind's not on your spouse. Your mind's not on what you're gonna eat after lunch or after, after service. Your mind is on the Lord. Your spouse cannot give you the Holy Ghost. The person praying with you will pray for you, but God is the one that will pour out the Holy Ghost upon you. So your mind is to be on him, not you, not how great you are, how terrible you are. Your mind's on his greatness, how great he is. He's the king of kings, and he loves you. He's the Lord of lords, and he died for you. He loves you more than any human being has ever loved you. Number four, you have to have faith you're going to receive the Holy Ghost today. 
Not tonight, not next Sunday, not Wednesday night, not if I get around to it. I'm getting the Holy Ghost today. That's faith. I've never seen someone come up to the altar to receive the Holy Ghost with a made-up mind. I'm not leaving without it and leave without it. Faith is massive when it comes to receiving the Holy Ghost. Without faith, you can't please God. So you have to have faith you're going to get it today. And here's the big, this is, this is so deep, it's going to blow your mind. You're literally going to leave here with a headache. You actually, you actually have to speak for God to let you speak in tongues. The key to getting the Holy Ghost is worshiping with your own mouth. Hello? Worship with your own mouth. What does that mean? Okay. So when you're praying for the Holy Ghost, and after we've repented, and we're all do this, we'll be all up here together, and I've prayed the prayer of faith, which basically means I'm taking all my faith and dumping it with your faith, and then we'll leave it up to God to pour out the Holy Ghost to whoever needs it in here. But when we do that, worship is the key. So you have to open your mouth and worship him yourself. It makes no sense for me to expect God to fill you with the Holy Ghost if you refuse to open your mouth. God's not going to let you speak in tongues when you refuse to speak. So what's worship? Worship is, I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's the greatest word you can pray when you're trying to get the Holy Ghost. Start praying that hallelujah. It's the highest praise you can give God. He dwells in the praises of people. So when you start saying hallelujah, 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 God gets out of heaven and comes down and begins to fill people with the Holy Ghost. In fact, that'll be your cue in a moment when we pray for the shout hallelujah because that is the key to receiving the Holy Ghost. Let's shout it right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is straight preaching, but you're going to die someday if God has not returned soon, and you're going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. You don't have to like it. It's just the truth. You're going somewhere forever. And the word said you must be born of the water and the spirit to enter the kingdom of God. I want him living inside of me. I don't want to take a chance on a car wreck, a heart attack, any kind of crazy disease, any kind of sudden. I want the Holy Ghost living inside of me. Preacher, why do you preach it so straight? Because I've, I've challenged people and looked right in their eye and them defy it and them die three hours later. I've had people refuse to pray and them die the same night. I don't play games when I preach this. Someone is is in the room that needs the Holy Ghost and you don't need to leave here without it. That's got to be your mentality. I'm not leaving here without the power of Jesus inside of me. Let's stand right now. No matter what background you have, the Holy Ghost is for you. No matter how great of a person you are, how terrible of a person you are, the Holy Ghost is for you. I have seen every, every kind of person get the Holy Ghost. I've seen Satanists get the Holy Ghost. That's always a good thing. I've seen witches get the Holy Ghost. I've seen crazy things. I've seen atheists, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, people that did not believe in God, did not believe in church, did not absolutely defiant. But when the power of God came upon them, they couldn't leave denying it because they received the Holy Ghost inside of them. Today is the day for you to leave here with the Spirit of God. And let me just let the devil hear something right now. Besides the fact that it gets us to heaven, it gives us power over every demonic spirit that could come against us. Depression cannot, cannot overcome the Holy Ghost. Suicide cannot conquer the Holy Ghost. Fear cannot conquer the Holy Ghost. It's greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It gives you joy unspeakable and full of glory. It gives you peace. Do you realize when he fills you, he literally comes down from heaven and now lives inside of you? It's the greatest feeling. Can I get a witness? Is it the, is it the greatest feeling in the world when God fills you with the Holy Ghost? Here's how we do it, okay? Here's how I do it. Here's what we're about to do. 
In a moment, we're going to pray a prayer of repentance after we come forward. Normally, I'd have Bishop Gurley do that, but he's not here, so I'll, I'll pray the prayer of repentance. And after we repent of our sins and make sure nothing's in the way on our end, we'll transition and pray the prayer of faith, and many people will receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost in this place today and never be the same. I'm excited about what God's about to do. And it's about to happen in this place. It rained like crazy a couple months ago here. It's about to rain in here. The physical is a signal to the spiritual, what's about to take place. It's gonna rain in this building today, an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Before we come forward to repent of our sins, can you, I, need, I need everyone to help me. I, if you know me. If you know me, you would know that I'm telling the truth right now. That I would come to every person in the building and ask them this question if I had the time. But because I don't have the time and don't want to do that, would you help me and ask all four neighbors around you, have you received the Holy Ghost yet? Would you ask your neighbors that? Have you received the Holy Ghost yet by speaking in tongues? And would you answer the question honestly, yes or no? If they said no, tell them today's the day. If they said yes and you think they're lying. People lie in church, y'all. People lie in church more than they lie in the club. I, I taught a guy a Bible study for weeks on receiving the Holy Ghost and being baptized in Jesus' name. Finally got him to come to church. Told me he'd never been baptized got him to church he sat by my wife I said ask the person they've been baptized into. I watched him say yes I have and you know me I was like Kevin you're lying and you're going to hell Kevin got baptized that day listen you don't have to like me but I answer to God And there's, if there's one soul in here. And when God says preach on the Holy Ghost, I am in disobedience if I do not. And your blood will not be on my hands. You will not stand before God and say, no preacher ever told me. Because you've been officially told. It is time to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and never be the same again. Here's what's gonna happen. In a moment, we're gonna come to the front. We're gonna repent. I'll pray the prayer of faith. I'll have you shout hallelujah. If you've got the Holy Ghost, you are officially recruited right now as an altar worker. You'll lay hands on people. When they start to speak in tongues, this is the only way you can communicate with me. Throw your thumb in the air. That lets me know that person received the Holy Ghost. And I can tell the audience to build the faith for others. I'll explain it more in a minute. But right now, would you help me? From the back row in the balcony to the back row in the bottom section of the front row, would you grab your neighbor and would you come to the front right now? Would you grab your neighbor and come to the front? Everybody in the building right now. If you're physically able. If you're not physically able, we understand. If you stay in the pew, I'm coming to pray for you myself. Come up to the front right now. Get as close as you can. Bring your guests, bring your friend. Several are still coming. Make plenty of room. It's gonna fall on the altar. It's gonna fall on the aisles. He said, I will pour out my spirit. Not I will trickle it out. I won't control where it lands, I'll pour it out. It'll land over here and splash over there. The altar is loaded with people. God's going to pour out His Spirit. Everyone look up here, please. I'm going to pray a prayer of repentance. But you have to repent for yourself with your own mouth. 
You can pray what I'm praying, but pray it from your heart, not your head. In other words, don't just repeat what I say, but mean what you're saying. Repent. That's the key. And take it serious. Make sure nothing's in the way of God filling you with the Holy Ghost or God using you to pray for someone to receive the Holy Ghost. No music. Everyone repenting with me right now. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for every thought, every word, every action, every sin of my mind, every sin of my heart, every sin of my mouth, every sin of my eyes, every sin of my ears, every emotional sin, every physical sin, every spiritual sin, every financial sin, every sin of my past, every sin of my present. If I've hurt someone, forgive me. If I've got sin I don't know about, forgive me. Cleanse me, oh God. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in me. Fill me with the Holy Ghost today. I repent of all my sins. Without you, I am lost. I have no chance. You're my only hope. I need you right now. I cannot make it without you. Make sure nothing's in the way. Make sure nothing's in the way. Every sin be remitted. Every sin be removed. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. Somebody say, thank you for forgiving me. Let's clap our hands and thank the Lord. Come on, thank him for forgiving you. You've got no right to not forgive yourself if he forgives you. Now you ask someone if they had the Holy Ghost, and some of you said some did not have it yet. And some, you received it a long time ago, you need it again. And some, you, you've got the Holy Ghost. If you've got it, you're an altar worker. Your job is not to watch and look around. Your job is to find someone, pray for them. And as soon as they start speaking in tongues, in a moment when I pray the prayer of faith, remember what we do, we throw the thumb in the air. I know this is gonna sound, it's not spiritual, but it's, communicati it's communication. If you can let me know, it's the only way I can tell when people are, when there's a mass crowd like this, is if you let me know. And if you let me know, Pastor Tyler, come up here with me also so you can help me see. If you let us know, we can let everyone else know and build faith. So in other words, when this one over here gets it and you let me know, I can say that one just received the Holy Ghost. That will build faith for someone over here that's praying for the Holy Ghost. I'm about to pray the prayer of faith. And when I do, when I'm done, your cue to worship with the Holy Ghost is you will hear me say, shout hallelujah. And when you start shouting hallelujah, some of you, that'll be the last thing you say in English. As soon as you say it, God will take over and you'll start speaking words that are not in your native tongue. Some, it may take a moment or two. But keep worshiping with hallelujah. Oh, I love you, Jesus. And when those words start, stop making sense and you feel other words coming, hallelujah has served its purpose. I love you, Jesus, has served its purpose. Let the spirit flow. Let the other words come out of you. I can feel faith in here right now. Somebody clap in expectation. He tell us.
it's about to happen. One's already received the Holy Ghost right here. One's already received the Holy Ghost. Are you ready? Everyone lift up your head and lift up your hands and by the authority of the Word of God and by the power of the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Shout hallelujah. Now lay your hands on them. Lay your hands on them and begin to pray. Lay your hands on them and begin to do. Just receive the Holy Ghost right there. In the last day, saith God. There you go. Three. Three right here. Three have received the Holy Ghost. Who's next? In the name of Jesus. In the name. Somebody help me pray for these young ladies right here. No one's praying for them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We've already had three. Let me know when they get it. Number four. Just receive the Holy Ghost. Who is next? Who is next? Who is next? In the last day, saith God. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Throw your thumb up when they get it. That's the only way you can tell me. That's it. He's speaking in tongues. Number five right there. Just got the only you got to tell me, guys. Let me know when they get it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name. There you go. Let it go. Let it go in Jesus' name. Let it go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That's six. Go ahead, Brother Dean. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus. That's it. He's speaking in tongues. He's speaking in tongues. Number seven right there. Let me know when they get it. Let me know when they get it. That's it. Let your tongue go. Let your tongue go. Let your tongue go. In Jesus' name, receive the Holy Ghost. There you go. Now. In Jesus' name. Now. Now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Number eight, I see you. Number eight right there. Receive. Number nine, just receive the Holy Ghost. Number 10, just receive the Holy Ghost. Number 11, just receive the Holy Ghost. It's Sunday morning. Now, in Jesus' name. All right. Hallelujah. Another one. Right here, another one. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Number 12. I count him. That's a lie. I counted him. Still at 11. I count him. In Jesus' name. These two right here. Someone lay hands on these two right here. In Jesus' name. We've already had 11 people get the Holy Ghost in less than three minutes. Somebody worship the Lord. That's it. Lift up your head. Lift up your voice. Hallelujah. Number 12. Just receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let your tongue go. 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 In the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. I see you. I see you back there. Number 13. Number 13. I see you. Yep, I see you. 13. Let's receive the Holy Ghost. Number 14. Just receive the Holy Ghost. Who's next? Who's next? Who's next? Who's next? In Jesus' name. We got a bunch right here. Come on, First Church. We got a bunch right here. We got a bunch that need it right here. He love a Her, 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 him. He call him Osata. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Number 15. Just got the Holy Ghost. Number 16 in the aisle. Just got the Holy Ghost. Number 17. Just got the Holy Ghost. 
Number 18, Mother Tyler just got the Holy Ghost. Somebody rejoice. Somebody worship. God is pouring out the Holy Ghost. God is pouring out the Holy Ghost again. You got it? Number 19. Just got, number 20 in the back just got the Holy Ghost. Let it rain. 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 Come on, let your walls down. Let your walls down. Let your walls down. Let your walls down. Let God feel you. Let God feel you. Let God feel you. We will pray five or six minutes. Number 21, I see you. Number 21, just receive the Holy Ghost. It's a promise to you and your children and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Oh yes. Who's next? Who's next? Who's next? Come on bro, speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Let that tongue go. Let that tongue go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let that tongue go. In Jesus' name. It's okay. Don't be afraid. Let it flow. Let it flow out of you. That's it. Let it flow out of you. Let that tongue go. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. 22. He just got it right there. He got it. 22. Just receive the Holy Ghost. Who's next? Who's next? Who's next? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Holy Ghost now. In the name of Jesus, every restriction be removed. Holy Ghost flow out of her mouth. There you go. There you go. Here it comes. Now in Jesus' name. There you go. There you go. That tongue is going to be loose. In Jesus' name. Receive. Number 23 just got it right there. And number 24 right now in Jesus' name. There you go. There you go. There you go. How that's it. Let it go. There you go. Yeah. Yes. 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 That's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 24 have received the Holy Ghost. There's still more praying. There's still more praying. Let it rain. 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 Now, in Jesus' name. Now, there you go. Let that tongue go. Now, there you go. There you go. In Jesus' name. There you go. In Jesus' name. Yes! There we go. That's the Holy Ghost. More's coming. More's coming. Number 25. Number 25. In Jesus' name, God just filled her with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 26, Brother Tyler said. 26. Just received the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Who's next? Who is next? Who is next? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Every wall come down. Every barrier. In Jesus' name. Let the Holy Ghost come upon you.
Lord Jesus. Receive the Holy Ghost. That's it. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's coming. It's coming. This is your moment. This is your moment. Every distraction removed. Every stronghold removed. Every attack removed. Doubt, go away. Tongue be loose there. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let that tongue be loose. Come on. In Jesus' name. Come on. Now. In the name of there you go. Now. 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 Loose that tongue. Loose that tongue. Loose that tongue. Loose that tongue. In Jesus' name. I'm coming right back. Loose that tongue. In Jesus' name. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Here. There you go. There you go. Let it go. In Jesus' name. Now. Now. In Jesus' name. Speak it out. Speak it out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 26 have received the Holy Ghost. We still have a few more praying for, a few more seeking God for. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Walls come down. Fear come down. Now, in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, take over. Take over, Holy Ghost. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord God. Fill them right now. Ready to go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, take them. Twenty-seven, 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 twenty-seven. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Twenty-eight over there, I see you. Twenty-eight, just receive the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, now God, let it rain. Now. Yes, another one right here. 29, he's speaking in tongues. He's speaking in tongues. He's speaking in tongues. He's speaking in tongues. 29. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, right now. Receive the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. There you go, sir. There you go. Now, every wall down. There you go. Let it flow. Now, in the name of Jesus, receive the Holy Ghost. Come on, sir. You're there. You're on the doorstep. You're on the doorstep. That's it. In the Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We're at 29. Get the Holy Ghost. Come on, Lord. Fill him right now. Come on, big guy. Come on, big guy. Now, in Jesus' name, let the Holy Ghost flow. In the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, even the young men as you are right now. That's a promise. Let it come now in the name of Jesus. Let it come now in the name of Jesus. You're there, dude. You're there. That's it. Let it go. Let that tongue go. You're there in Jesus' name. Yes, yes, yes. Started coming just now. Started coming. Now, receive the Holy Ghost. Now, let that tongue. 
Number 30, he's speaking in tongues right there. Number 30, just receive the, 31, just receive the Holy Ghost. 32 and 33 in the back. Just wish somebody ought to get loud right now. Somebody ought to get loud and join the angels. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thirty-four. Just receive the Holy Ghost. Oh, it's raining in Paraland. It's raining. It's raining. Another one's about to get it. Hallelujah. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I don't know. Can we? I feel like doing something. We got a couple more still praying. But I feel like shifting. Another one? 35 just got the Holy Ghost in the pew right there. I feel like shifting into rejoicing right now. Some more still praying. Let's sing and rejoice to the Lord. Come on, angels are going crazy right now. We've had 35 people receive the Holy Ghost. Can we magnify the Lord? They're gonna shift and worship God. Let's rejoice with the angels. Let's magnify the Lord. Keep praying with those that are praying. God is still pouring out the Holy Ghost. God is still pouring out the Holy Ghost. There it is now in Jesus name in Jesus name let that tongue go now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus there we go there we go there we go <laughs> 36 right there 36 speaking in tongues 36 37 on the floor over there this received the Holy Ghost My goodness, it's raining. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! 39! 39 by the camera! Just receive the Holy Ghost! 40! Number 40 just received! Oh, come on! Come on, can we worship God? Number 40 just received the Holy Ghost! Believe it or not, it's the last days. Let's go, Azusa. Let's take it. Let's go in Jesus' name.
you thank you for being here this morning? Aren't you amazed at the presence of Almighty God that's been in this place? 43 people filled with the Spirit of 44, number 44. Many are still praying. If you are, by all means, continue. We're going to worship the Lord a while longer. Pastor's lunch begins in about five minutes. If you're a guest with us today, if you're new here, please walk down to the event center. We want to connect with you, want to meet you. We've got a great meal prepared. God bless you. We'll see you back tonight at 6 o'clock. Breakthroughs are happening. If you need to be baptized, if you'll meet me over here to my right, your left, someone will meet you there, take you up to the baptistry, and we will baptize you in the name of Jesus right now. Lord bless you. Thank you for being here this morning. Be back tonight at 6 o'clock.